She loves these creatures. She believes they are beautiful and powerful. Their long flowing mane adds to their natural beauty. These creatures love to be in community with one another. She loves caring for these beautiful creatures. My name is Rachel Cook, and I love working with horses and doing anything with horses. They're beautiful and powerful and so willing. Like, they'll be your friend if you want them to. You also have to be dominant and show them who's boss. And I just like building a relationship where I'm in control, but I have a willing partner. Grooming is very important. Before you saddle, you definitely want to groom. If I were to just throw the saddle on, on top of any dirt or hair or whatever that's just on there, that wouldn't be good. It might cause rubs and sores. It wouldn't be comfortable for the horse. I'm gonna start with the curry brush, which is the one that you take in circles. And what that does is it turns up the hair and dust, and you'll see tufts of hair coming off with that, especially now because it's shedding season. And then I wanna use what's called the hard brush. That you're gonna use the short, straight strokes. And that's just gonna knock off the dust and hair and whatever else you turned up with the curry. After I use the hard brush, I'll use the soft brush and do the short, same short, straight strokes. And that's just kind of a polishing off brush. If you want your horse to look nice and pretty, then you should. And then of course the hoof pick. If there's any type of stone in your horse's feet, well, that's gonna, that could cause a bruise and if you don't have a good hoof on the horse, then you have a bad horse all the way over. You can't ride them until their foot is healed. If you have a horse that's groomed every day, you can probably get away with just doing a hard brush before tacking up. In the video, you see that he's really dirty to begin with. Plus, it provides extra bonding time with the horse, just to like see how they're feeling. Are you seeing that leg being cocked? Are you seeing the ears up and perked and looking all over, okay, that's not something I wanna see. I wanna see his head kind of down, his ears relaxed. Calm and relaxed is what I wanna see when I'm grooming. So that can help me know how the ride is gonna go. Adrian, much better. Yeah, yeah, I'm the one that you need to be focused on now, not one that's over there. I know those bugs are annoying, that's why your tail keeps going. I'm gonna get you some fly spray and that'll solve that problem. Saddling, putting on the saddle, putting on the bridle, all that is called tacking up. And all that equipment is called tack. First you want to start with uh, the saddle pad and you want to put that kind of up on the horse's withers. That's kind of at the shoulder. And usually you want to put the saddle pad up a little further than you would normally where you want the saddle to actually sit because it'll slide back. So first you get the saddle pad on, put it up a little further than you want the saddle to actually sit and that will be closer up to the horse's neck. And then you wanna take the saddle itself and kind of get the girth slung up over the saddle and out of the way. Get the stirrup kind of slung up over the saddle, out of the way, you can put that on the saddle horn. If you have an English saddle, those stirrups actually slide up to the top, but we're using Western. Put that on top of the saddle pad, again, a little bit higher than you want it to actually sit because it's gonna slide. I like to make sure I go around to the other side of the horse and check and just make sure that everything is A-OK -okay on that side. Um, make sure that the stirrup didn't get caught up between the horse and the saddle. I've heard stories of that happening before. Uh, make sure that the girth is pulled out or the cinch and you'll tie it up. So you take the um, strap and put it down through and then you bring it back up and then down through and then back up one more time. You usually want to wrap it twice. And then you go down, around, back through, and down. And it's a pretty uh, secure knot and it helps make sure that the saddle's in place. You always want to check the girth two or three times before you mount. I took Trey out and actually lunged him in the round pen before I put the bridle on. There's a man named Monty Roberts and I read his autobiography, and I already knew about the join-up before I read his autobiography. 
but I found out more of the history of the join up at that point. Uh, what a join up is, and he actually went out and observed wild herds and noted how their herd behaviors and how the lead mare would separate out a colt who was being mischievous from the rest of the herd. Now the colt's safety comes from the herd. And so he noticed how the punishment was to drive the horse out. And when that horse started showing signs of saying, I'm sorry, that is looking and chewing, dropping their head, keeping a smaller circle, and keeping one ear, the inside ear, pinned on whoever the trainer is. When you see those four particular signs, that's the horse saying, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to offend you. I feel safe with you, can I come back in? I don't feel safe out here on my own because I'm a prey animal. Well, Monty took those, what he observed out with the wild herd and put it into the round pen. He took this horse who is nervous and running away, drove him around in a circle, did the same things that the lead mare would do, which is to drive him away, face, look him in the eyes, hold out your arms and keep your front toward them. You also want to get back behind so you're kind of driving the horse around. And then when you start seeing those four signs, ear pinned on you is usually the first, looking and chewing, smaller circle and head dropping. The horse is saying, okay, I didn't mean to offend you. I'm sorry, I'm scared of you. You're my protection now. I see you're a good leader. And then that's when you can do what the lead mare would do, which is the lead mare would turn away from the horse that they're driving away and basically ignore them. And then that horse would be then allowed to come back into the herd. When Monty saw those four signs, that's when he turned and basically pretended that the horse wasn't there. And then he could walk wherever he wanted and that horse would be like, I'm not leaving your side. I, of course, I already knew about the join up beforehand, but just reading that autobiography and learning more about the why behind it and how it works is fascinating. But then I finally met um, Trey, who you see me with in the video. I got to try it and the very first time I did it, I actually had him follow me right at my shoulder without a lead rope, without anything, just following me. And so I continue to do that in order to build his trust with me and just to kind of see how he's feeling. And that's how I would earn his trust. Once I get the horse following me, I want to push it a few steps further and see how much trust I have from the horse. So if I can get the horse to do what's called yielding of the hindquarters, and that's basically where you want to see the horse on the hind, with the hind legs stepping across, under and across. You don't want them stepping back and around. You want them to cross their hind legs over. And what that does is it temporarily uh, prevents the horse from bucking, jumping, rearing, running away. It can't do anything in that moment while its legs are crossed. And that's a sign that, okay, I trust you enough to yield myself to you. You can also have the horse yield the forehand where um, you want them to cross in front with the with the forelegs and again that's another sign of okay I trust you. Once I master that from the ground which Trey has really mastered it then I can also do it from the saddle. That way if he starts bucking while I'm under saddle, I can say uh-uh and I can make him yield those hindquarters and all of a sudden, oh, I gotta trust you, I can't buck right now. So I chose to put the bridle on after and then I'm gonna use my left hand to guide that bit into the horse's mouth. There's a place in the back of their mouth where their lips are where you can stick your thumb in and there aren't any teeth so they can't bite you there. So you can get your thumb in and put it on top of the tongue and that'll help the horse to open up. I get really excited because it is so relaxing. It helps me think through things and just slow down and enjoy life. Sometimes I wonder why I like them so much, but I just can't help myself and I love it. And when I'm around horses, any physical pain I have, for some reason, just goes away. If I have a cut or scratch, like, I don't notice it while I'm around the horses. It also is a thrill because it keeps me alert and I have to be watching to see like, okay, what's this horse's body language telling me? What's coming next? And if he is going to spook, what can I do to help relieve him of that anxiety and still get a great ride? When I go into a canter, it just feels like I'm flying. It's just incredible. <laughs>